Hey, thank you so much for joining us today and led by the word. We are going to be in Joshua chapters 12 forward. I'm not sure how far Jesse went. Honestly, I don't remember how far I went. I think I went to 18. I want to offer these to you guys. Spiritual checklist. This has been an incredible, incredible thing. Um, if you're facing discouragement, if you're facing doubt, if you're facing hurt, if you're facing just a dry season in your life and you're wondering, um, God, where are you? How, how can I stir up that relationship with you again? This is an incredible free resource to you. And I love how Oasis Ministries does this. We, we don't only send this to you free. We don't even get you to pay postage. We're, I love that. That's an incredible thing we're doing. So if you would be interested in one of these, we're going to put in the description, but you can go to oasisministries.com, click resources, and then drop down from resources and click spiritual checklist. Please sign up for this. This is a, a wonderful thing we would like to make available to you. So there's a lot of miraculous things that happen in Joshua, and I think we kind of gloss over the because so many miraculous things happened under Moses' leadership. Like, for example, um, we talk about the parting of the Red Sea. You know, like that was astronomical. That was awesome. That was amazing. So the children of Israel could cross through, right? But also, um, the Jordan River in chapter 3 of Joshua it also kind of parts. Um, basically what happens is the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant, once they step into the river, it's like the water's just whooshed away from them. Mm -hmm. And they stayed that way until they crossed the other side. I'm not sure what that time frame is, but it was pretty cool. So it's like, we talk about the Red Sea, we don't really talk about the Jordan a lot. Uh, I love the Jordan because there was no staff and there was no lifting. It yeah. was just God chasing it. Yeah. Jesse was sick Sunday. We, we did in Sunday school, and one of the kids was asking questions about it. I was like, I'm just going to title this God Chasing the Water. Mm, I like that. It was amazing. It's a cool story. It really is. Um, and then, you know, in chapter 4, when the priests come out, then the of the Jordan, the waters come back. Um, in chapter 6, we see the children of Israel march around the walls of Jericho. I think we're all pretty much familiar with that story. Um, basically, every day they would walk around, and they would blow the trumpets at the end of the walk if you will and like I, in my mind especially as a child who grew up in the early 2000s circa veggie tales uh, uh yeah so i feel like they kind of they made it like you know fun and everything and i feel like the city looked considerably smaller than what it actually was uh no offense to veggie tales they're very educational but this was a massive city and these walls i mean they were fortitude pretty well and the fact that on the seventh day they walk around they blow the trumpet they shout the walls fall flat like mm -hmm. that's mind-blowing like that's a miracle in itself um in chapter 10 joshua actually tells the son to stand still um and i have heard more on that recently i think ministered about how they were in battle and basically they were saying they were going to win before the sun went down and so i guess they really made sure of that because they told the sun to stand still mm -hmm. and that was like the only time that ever happened i think the next verse after that says there was never a day before or after that day like that was like unto that day where the sun stand still stood still excuse me and i think personally that these miracles were happening because joshua and therefore the children of israel were walking in the perfect will of god so that's not to say they didn't mess up when they took over Jericho uh, side note that's when they got Rahab the harlot out and her family and everything they were given specific instructions they could carry some coins and some jewels out to be in the treasury of the Lord but some stuff they were specifically forbidden not to touch um, and so they're like just don't do that it'll be fine it'll be great well this one guy Achan he was from the tribe of Judah. He deliberately, like, coveted a bunch of stuff they weren't supposed to take. It was like a Babylonian cloak, like a wedge of gold, a bunch of stuff. And so he took it and buried it in his tent, basically. And so he ended up getting his whole family killed um, after that. And Joshua was so grieved about this, you know, like they had this sin upon the whole children of Israel, basically. So he, like, prayed, he repented, he asked the Lord, we know, Lord, what should I do? And the Lord said, sanctify the people after they had gotten rid of Achan and everything. So it's not to say that they were always in the perfect will as a unity, as a body, but pretty much, yes. And then when they messed up, they rectified the situation. They took care of it, and they're like, okay, we're moving on. We're going on into your perfect will. Um, there were some scriptures that I really, like, stuck out to me. In chapter 10, verse 7 and 8, it says, So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor, 
And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into thy hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Amen. And then down to verse 11 it says, And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Betharon, that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them unto Azekah, and they died. They, they were more which died from hailstones than they whom the children of Israel slew with the sword. Wow. So the Lord himself took care of more enemies than the children of Israel even had to fight off. In verse 14, that same chapter, it says, um, I'm sorry, that was the son verse, but I'm, where was this? Yeah, 14, I'm sorry. This is when Joshua told the son to stand still. It said, and there was no day like that before or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of of a man for the Lord fought for Israel so we're actually seeing the Lord himself fighting for them not just I'm giving you favor I told you you can go against these nations and you'll win he was literally putting in like the heavy lifting you know there were stones coming from heaven like he orchestrated all of this it's incredible to see the benefits that the children of Israel were walking in when they were walking in his perfect will and that's so that's why it's so important for us to walk in his perfect will and it we make it a lot more complicated than it need be. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't know God's will for my life, God's will for my life. Yes, God has an individual purpose for each and every one of us, but he also wills that you love your neighbor, you love yourself, you serve him wholeheartedly. I mean, there's some basic things you can do to make sure you are in the will of the Lord. We get so caught up in calling. Yes, And yes. calling is more specific than will. Here's what I'm going to say. Why would God give you a clear direction in your calling if you won't even step into his will? Mm, that's good. <clears throat> I mean, that's a... I'm sorry, I'm joking. That's a, that's a sad thing, though. We get this all the time, people emailing in. I, I feel aimless. I feel lost. I don't know what my calling is. I don't know what my calling is. I don't know what my calling is. If you don't know what you're supposed to be doing right now, go back four steps to the Word mm -hmm. and find out what you were supposed to be doing yesterday. <laughs> start walking in those things. Start walking in those commandments. Start walking in His will. And, and you'll find out his will um, is so, so rewarding. I think the reason we obsess over calling is that we think that's what's going to be the true reward. That's mm -hmm. what we're going to feel like, oh, this is good for us. One, that's it's a selfish mindset, us as humans. But thing number two, being in his will is the most rewarding thing that we could have. Amen. That's an incredible sure. thought. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be in Joshua chapters 13, verse 14. So they're getting... They're uh, infiltrating the land of Canaan. Oh, one thing, the uh, walls of Jericho. Mm. Up on top, it was wide enough for two chariots to ride side by side. Mm. So the wall, they said it was almost 35 feet in depth. And then this thing fell flat. So they said if it fell, if it fell forward, if it fell downward, it would have been a huge heaping mound of stone. So the ground literally had to open up for these walls to sink into because mm -hmm. it says they walked across it it was flat what jesse said that is the miracle is the falling the second miracle is that it didn't fail in rubble when you see something fall today i love demolition videos it's this huge pile of what's left there was nothing left to stop them mm -hmm. and i think you know the joshua is a leader of warriors and he has a leader of mighty men and when you're on the inside and you're looking out at these warriors there's nothing stopping the warrior from getting to you and then you see God intervene. I think when God intervened, they were no longer any fear of them of warriors. Mm -hmm. It changed those people to a fear of God. <laughs> and you can think of how powerful, because Joshua, as great as he is, and as amazing a warrior as we know Joshua is, he can't do supernatural. Josh can't, Joshua can't do the stuff that God does. Okay, uh, Joshua 13, uh, chapter 13, verse 14. Only unto the tribes of Levi he gave None inheritance. Somebody say none inheritance. None inheritance. The sacrifices of the Lord God of Israel made by fire are their inheritance as they said unto them. So <clears throat> we know the tribes and we know how God says each tribe gets a specific thing. The tribes of Levi were the ones that ran the um, tabernacle. Is it tabernacle or temple? In the wilderness. I thought the tabernacle moved. So Yeah, okay. It was the tabernacle. Okay. So the tribes of Levi that oversaw that and they weren't given land so there's I, i've done some studying of this it's really sparked by curiosity one reason people believe they didn't need land is because levi had no livestock 
all of the livestock was provided by the other tribes, which had to have all the farmland. So one, we know Levi didn't need that. Thing number two, Levi was called as the leadership to everyone else. So in medical, when we talked about that, Levi was the doctors. The Levites were also the judges and the rulers and the deciders of uh, law. So what ends up happening with the Levites, they are scattered out as cities um, throughout the land of Israel. So when pastor preaches this beautiful, beautiful sermon, um, City of Refuge, those cities of refuge are Levite cities that God places in. So when you needed to rush to one of these cities of refuge, if you were accused of murder or if you were a murderer, you could not be touched in this city, no matter how much proof was against you, until the Levites, the rulers of these cities, uh, casted their judgment. And I think it's amazing how God then is showing us now, if you are a person of, um, if you're saved, one of your goals is to be in places to help people. Mm. And sometimes I think that could have been hurtful to the Levites. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. From the beginning, we were your number ones. We worked the hardest. We moved the tabernacle. We picked it up. We tore it down. We did all the hard work. We did this. We did this. We did this. And now we get nothing. God said, no, it's not that you don't get nothing. You get me. And I'm a lot more valuable than land. I'm a lot more valuable than mountains. I'm a lot more valuable than fields. You're going to have my anointing, and I'm going to put you on a place of leadership to everyone else. So if you're in a place and God's got a promise for you, we're not talking about Colin. I'm running right with Jesse's thought right now. We're talking about Will. Turn with me to Joshua chapter 18 and verse 2. So people are already moving in and getting their calling, not their calling, getting their land, getting their inheritance. And listen to this. And there remained among the children of Israel seven tribes. Somebody say seven. Seven. Which had not yet received their inheritance. So the Bible says received. And it's true they haven't received, but it was already offered to them. Hmm. So these people, they already said, okay, we're going to go with you to the land of Canaan. But they haven't received what was promised to them. So in my mind, I was like, why haven't they? Why hasn't God given it to them? It's not that God's given it to them. Here it is. Why would they not have their inheritance? Accepting their inheritance of the land also meant accepting the responsibility to finish conquering it. Mm -hmm. So these people were given this promise of this land, and they've already divvied it out. So they said, Gad goes here, you go here, you go here. Let's see what we got. Manasseh, Judah, Dan. So the seven that are left, they're looking around, they're like, okay, I love it. And then they're getting that fear again. They're getting that concern again. After all of these miracles Jesse's talked about, they're still facing that just like you and I do today. But when they step in and they reach their promised land, they take it over easily. Hmm. So I want to encourage you today. There has been promises for you in your life, and you have that concern of, is this possible? Is this something I can do? Is this something I can conquer? Is this something I am able to uh, reach? You're looking at this all wrong. If God promised you something, his promises are yea and amen. It isn't about you. You need to take those eyes out. You need to take those, I'm Manasseh, can Manasseh do this? I'm Gad, can Gad do this? I'm Zebulun, can we do this? I'm Reuben, can I do this? I'm Ephraim, can I do this? Take all that away and say, God promised me this. This is mine. And here's where it gets tough, though. Here's where I'm saying it all easy. This is where the hard part comes in. Now you have to understand you got to walk in God's promise. But you also have to give all of your responsibility. So now it's your responsibility to fast. Now it's your responsibility to seek the Word of God harder than you've ever sought before. Now it's your responsibility when life makes no sense at all to continue worshiping. And you say, well, Micah, you just said his promises are yea and amen. Yes, but his timing is not our timing. That's true. Jesse, back, back me up a little bit on this and talk to us. Oh, 100%. I mean, even you see with Lazarus, you know, he was four days late, you know. But God's timing is not our timing at all. And it, it's in those moments, that's where the enemy wants to speak the loudest to you. He always wants to speak loud to you. That's when he has the opportunity to speak loudest to you of discouragement. Saying, look, God's done failed you. And he wants to make, you're a disciple of Christ. You watching this video right now, you're a disciple of Christ. And the enemy wants to make you a disciple of him to tell others, God failed you. Mm -hmm. And it's not that God fails any of us. It's just that we have this design. This is how it's going to work. I'm sure Gad had a design 
Or let's say Joshua. Well, no, Joshua was an amazing, amazing man. Uh, let's say one of the generals. The general has his eye on Joshua, meets with him. Joshua comes in and says, listen, we're going in. We're going to get it today. And then they come in and they see the biggest walls they've ever seen in their life. That wasn't their design. Right. That wasn't their layout. That wasn't their box. They said, no, you told us we was going to get a city. And then now you're telling us we're going to walk for days with instruments? Like, what? Joshua, what are you talking about? And Joshua is their spiritual leader. He is their under uh, shepherd of Christ. Sometimes God's going to test you. And there's nothing to say about it, but this is just a test to see, are you going to march around the city seven days and feel in your flesh, this makes no sense, this isn't battle, this isn't tactics, I've been trained better than this, I know better than this. <clears throat> Sometimes, I'm going to be real with you, you got to trust God. Yeah. Sometimes you got to give away of all your thoughts, all of your ideas, and just say, I'm going to trust God. Joshua chapter 14 uh Verses 7 through 9. Let me get this. I'm going to read this out of my Bible. Verse 7. Okay. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnessa to espy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, now read, hear verse 8 with me. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Now, this is holy, W-H-O-L-L-Y. Holy, follow the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land wherein thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance and thy children's forever, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord my God. I'm excited to finally reach my thought. I think I'm going a little too long today, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut through this real quick. We're just going to chop through this. I'm afraid some of us are part-time Christians. Mm-hmm. I'm afraid some of us are given this, um, our ability when it's easy, but when it becomes difficult, we're giving it our, our back and turning away. Joshua, no matter the circumstance, we see this man wholly committed. Not H-O-L-Y, W-H-O-L-L-Y, every drop of this man. Uh, certain translations of the Bible translate wholly to wholeheartedly. This man gave his entire heart and existence so whatever's going to happen, he's going to be in it. So this was encouraging me. If you go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 and 23, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. We're seeing the difference between people partly and wholly in this verse. And... I'm I'm feeling convicted, and I want to speak to somebody right now and say, I wish somebody would raise their hands, cry out to their God, and say, God, I can't part way do this. There is no way I can part way do this. I will fail you, and I'll be one of those workers of iniquity. God, I need to be wholly into this. So then we find out in uh, Malachi chapter three verse six, for I am the Lord, uh, and I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob. Uh, well, let me just do the first part. There's, for I am the Lord your God, and I change not. Who believes God is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Amen. That, that's a big, big, big label to put on something. To say you never change. God never changes. So when we read this story, and this is where I'm coming to my close, the thing that we find out is um, Jesus wants you to know him, which in turn means something beautiful. It means that we have the opportunity to know our Savior. And if we go all the way back to Joshua, if we go all the way back to the Levites, if we go all the way back to the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, this is my ending, and it's, a, it's kind of a rabbit trail. But this is just what I want to encourage you today. Honestly, this is kind of where I'm taking my thoughts Sunday for the Sunday school class, but I just want to bring it in here to podcast today. God wants to know you. And if God doesn't change and God wants to know them then, God wants to know you now. And, you know, we're, we're up here, we're talking a podcast today, and my dad is a, a great minister of the gospel, my grandfather, my cousin, my brother. We have all these ministers in the family. But God wants to know the people that volunteer on these grounds. God wants to know the person that comes once every few weeks to uh, bring eggs for the people that are hungry. God wants to know the people in the Bible that weren't even named. God knows you. God cares about you. God loves you. And he is an unchanging God that loves you and cares about you and knows you. 
And I, I, I want to encourage someone today. I think someone's ba- uh, facing some insecurity and feeling some lack of love in their life. And I want to encourage you today, if you kneel down and understand your identity is in a God that loves you and you are a son or daughter of that God, it, it will change your life. You've got to step back and quit facing all this stuff, all these lies, all this doubt, all this concern of, I don't think God really loves me. I don't think God could ever use me. You don't know how much I've messed up. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know how damaged I am. I, I hate to say it like this, but in the grand scheme of how much he loves you, that's a speck. Mm-hmm. He cares, and he wants to carry you, and he wants to be there for you, but that doesn't even phase a tiny, tiny bit of how important you are to him. So I, I want to encourage you today, the Bible that the enemy keeps telling you to run from, the Bible that the enemy keeps telling you that's not for you, you failed too much, or the Bible the enemy keeps telling you uh, you can never be good enough to be loved by God, I'm encouraging you today to chase after his word, chase after his promises, just like Jesse told you five minutes ago, seven minutes ago, however long before I started going on, this is his will. And God loves you so much. He laid this out for you and designed this out for you. He anointed, I don't even remember, it was countless of people over thousands of years in dozens of languages to write down his will for you. And it's been translated and given through time and space for you right here today. And I want to encourage you to study this out because this is for you. This isn't for the pastors. This isn't for the the Levites of the day. This is for you. This right here. Uh, And I... I feel convicted that we need not uh, take for granted what God's done for us and laid out for us in this word. Thank you so much for tuning in with us today. Take a moment to like this, comment it on this, share this. Uh, this is Joshua chapters 10. Well, you really went back. I did. You went back. You were at three yeah. and you were at seven. So this is just Joshua. We're just titled today Joshua. <laughs> this is Joshua. Uh, thank you for tuning in, me and my wife. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you.